Hey, future badass business owners. Welcome to the Start a Small Business Podcast, where each episode we'll be walking you through the process of getting your small business from concept to open for business. In this episode, we will be discussing why you need a basic website for your new small business. Having a website, even a basic website, is something that many small business owners do not take advantage of, especially in today's online mentality. Now, I don't care if you have a brick and mortar business or if you have a service-based business, you need a website. And the reason that you need a website is that in today's Googling world, everything is going mobile. Think about the last time that you want to know something or to look something up. You grabbed your phone and you looked it up. That's what we do nowadays. So when someone has a pain point and they're looking it up for a business to take care of it, they're doing the exact same thing. And what you want to do is you want to first show up, which is how you claim your business on Google, which we've talked about before. The second thing that happens is they get those top three people, right? Then they want to know more about those three people. And that's where your website comes in handy because what they're going to do is they're going to click on that name and then they're going to try to learn more. Now, if the other people that show up do not really answer questions about who they are, what problems they can solve, all those different things that the customer has, they're going to keep moving on to somebody makes them feel comfortable that they can take care of their problem. And this is where your website is going to come in handy. Because if you think about it, when someone has a problem and they're looking for someone to solve the problem, what they're looking for is on that website is, do you solve their problem? That's the first question they have. So what you're going to do is on your website is you're going to make sure that you put on there the problems that you solve. Now, I don't want you to list out 20 things of what you can do. Think of the 80-20 rule. 80% of your sales are going to come from one or two things. You need to make sure that those are first and foremost, the most prominent on your website that you solve those pain points. And then in the next section, you can talk about all the other things that you do, but you want to capture the main thing that people probably came there for. For example, if you're a plumber, since we use them as our examples all the time and you fix broken water heaters and that's what they're there for, you want to make sure that that's one of the first things that they see is that you can help them with their water heater problem. Now, if you think about it, once you put on the problems, they're going to have another set of questions, right? So they're going to go, oh, wow, okay, this person solves my problem. Their next questions are going to be a couple different things. It could be, I wonder how much this is going to cost, or it's going to be, I wonder what hours are they open? Are they open right now? Are they open on the weekends? Do they do work at night? So you're going to need to make sure that your website answers the question of the hours of operation. This way they know they can get helped and served. Some people, some businesses are only eight to five or nine to six. What's your business going to be? You need to make sure that on your website that you are very clear about the hours of operation that you have. Make sure you also do that on Google business because that's where it's also going to show up. You need to make sure that they line up together because people are going to want to know, can you help them when they get off work? Can you help them on the weekend? And if you can, you want to make sure that you shut that. That might be the one difference between you and your competitors. Now, the next thing they're going to want to know is they're going to want to know the hours. Obviously, they're going to want to know the price. They're also going to want to know what communities that you serve. Do you serve their community? Don't overlook this. Just because you have the name of your city inside of your name, is it confusing? Will they know that that's the area that you serve? Or maybe you're just on the outskirts of a community. Can you let them know that you do that community as well? Don't get me wrong. I'm still into the five mile radius and sticking close to home. But if you're part of like three, a tri-city or a bunch of cities really close to each other and you serve all three of them, you want to make sure that the people know that you can go to any of the three of them. However, if you have a really large community and you're focusing just on that community, then you want to make sure that you specify that that's the community that you serve. I want you to think about what is your specific client customer looking for. That's what you want to make sure that your website does. Now, please hear me out. I do not want you going out spending all kinds of money. I do not want you going out there spending, you know, thousands of dollars trying to build the most fancy website. You just need a basic website. Now, I get it. A lot of you do not have the technical skills. You don't even know how to do it. There are so many different, it's never been easier to create your own website than it is right now. They have so many templates that are ready made out the box that you can do. And if you are technically challenged, I promise you there's probably someone in your life, it could be a spouse, it could be a kid, it could be a neighbor, it could be a friend who could probably build you a website in an afternoon and just answer the basic questions 
of your business. It does not need to be fancy. If you want to get fancy later on, go for it. Don't worry that your competitors are nice and fancy. They have thousands of dollars to spend and they have big companies that they've hired to make their fancy websites. But I promise you the fancy website is not what gets you the business. What gets you the business is people knowing that you solve their problem. All right. So it's really important that you just focus on the key information. Now the final thing that you need to make sure that your website has on it is going to be how to get a hold of you. You should have on there a contact page. You should have it on the front page. You should have it on the bottom of the website on any pages that you have. And you need to have that contact page and it needs to have an email and you need to test that email. I can't tell you how many people have an email contact me on their website and it goes to nowhere. It goes to a black hole or nobody ever sees it. So please make sure you test it and you test it on a regular basis to make sure that you're getting those emails from your website. The other thing is you need to make sure that the phone number is correct because if all else fails, you need them to be able to call you and people are going to want to call you right then and there. So you're going to need to make sure that you're looking at that. So it's really important that you have that contact information. Now, a question that I get asked is, do I need to do a blog? Should I write articles? Should I do all that? At the bare minimum, you do not need to do it. But if you want to take it to the next level, yeah, sure. Write a different post once a month. Talk about something to do with your business. Teach people how to do things. Now, I know what you're thinking is if I teach them how to do it, they're not going to call me. Yes, they will. Because just like you are capable of building your own website, there's going to be a lot of you that are going to have somebody else do it for you. You just don't have the the time, the knowledge, the know-how, whatever, the confidence, whatever it is. Same thing with you teaching people how to solve stuff. Plus, it builds up goodwill. Let's say you teach someone how to fix a leaking toilet. Most of the leaks in a toilet are pretty basic and really easy to do. However, when they have that next big plumbing problem, who are they going to call? They're going to call you because they trusted you to teach them how to fix the leaking toilet. Now when their water heater is broken, they want to go back to the same person because they've already built a level of trust with you because they were reading some of your other stuff. So yes, I do think having a blog and writing an article once a month is going to benefit you. Plus it's going to help you with that Google juice where it's going to help people find you even more. So I definitely think there's an advantage to doing that. But when we focus on just the basics of your website, no, you do not need that right away. Remember, the main thing is, is that when people Google your business, you're going to show up because you first claimed your business. And two, when they touch your name of your business, it's going to show them the website. And when they come to the website, you're going to answer their main questions. Can you solve their problem? Talk to your ideal customer. Tell them the problems that you solve, the pain points that you solve. Then you're going to tell them the area that you serve. You're going to tell them the hours of operation. You're going to let them know your pricing. Some people won't put their pricing on there. It can go back and forth because people can steal your pricing. Uh, you can put on their call for a quote today, whatever the case may be. I think you're going to have to judge your specific business on its own merits. If you want to put that on there or not, some people benefit from it. Some people don't. So use your specific business as to the right thing, but at least give them an option to get a hold of you, which is the next part is make sure that there is an email and a phone number so that they can contact you. Because if they're on their phone, the odds are they're going to shoot you an email really quick, or they're going to call you especially because on Google Your Business, you just have to push that little button that says call. So you want to make sure that both your website and your Google business lets them call you right away. And if they're going to have the email, they can get a hold of you. So do you solve the pain point they have? Do you serve the area they're looking for? Do you have the hours that they need you to do it? How much is it going to cost? And how did they get a hold of you? Those are the main things. Anything you do above and beyond that is just gravy. Now I could go on and on about websites, but that's the most basic stuff you need to be able to get your business off the ground. So please make sure that you have a website. It's part of your, your plan and you put it together. It doesn't have to be fancy. Like I said, you can do it yourself in an afternoon. Just go to GoDaddy, go to, there's a bunch of little host gators. Some people do Squarespace. I mean, there's so many different ones that are out there. Uh, you just need a basic one. You can get it set up for under 20 bucks in some cases. Sometimes it's going to be as high as 250, depending upon the hosting and different things that you do, but there's different ways for you to get just a basic thing out there. I'm not going to go too deep into the specifics of setting up a website, but I think that as long as you know that it's just something to put on your checklist to make sure that you have in the early days of your business and you can always grow it, make it better as time goes on. All right. I'll talk to you on the next episode.